All right, welcome back to the channel. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. Today I'm going to get the 1911 out and we're going to talk about something I came across recently. This is my first follow-up video after the soak in oil series where I, uh, I tried to let the gun soak in some CLP for several months to see if it would bring back a little color and it didn't really, didn't really do the job the way I expected or at least the way I th initially thought. I had a friend who told me about the process for the for the manufacture of these guns and certain ones it probably wouldn't affect as much as others so here we are anywho i've got it all back together cleaned up ready to go we're going to walk through a little procedure here if you get your 1911 from the cmp you will receive a manual which is basically just a maintenance manual it doesn't talk much about firing or practicing your fundamentals of marksmanship and all that so it's basically just what it requires to break it down, how to clean it, and that sort of thing with some really grainy images. Uh, it's obviously a photocopied version, not a one of the original manuals, but which is, has its own place. But I came across this recently, which is a 1988 manual FM 23-35, Combat Training with Pistols and Revolvers. Um, the Army released this apparently when it was a really crazy time. You got three different pistols that are outlined in this book the brand new m9 at that time the 1911 and then a revolver this manual walks you through courses of fire practices everything from positions you should be standing in how to hold the gun and there was an exercise in here that i thought was pretty interesting this is called a pencil triangulation exercise i had never heard of this it's definitely not something that's taught in the military now and it actually says it'll only work with the 1911 and it will not work with the m9 so something about the firing pin what this exercise actually does is you actually shoot a pencil a standard pencil out of the gun like a dart at a target and you're working on your trigger squeeze your breathing your side alignment all the fundamentals of marksmanship and you're practicing towards a piece of paper and firing this pencil to see where the bullet would actually land if you were actually shooting it consists of firing a pencil or pointed dowel point blank at a miniature target it combines position grip side alignment and work exercise at the same time it measures the fire's performance without the effects of recoil this practical work is designed to teach and develop correct shooting habits it can be conducted indoors or out which makes an ideal exercise abilities are limited or weather is poor so you can actually do this in your bedroom and in, in an office and anywhere where you you can safely have a firearm out. It requires no ammunition. So I'm going to be outside doing this. Pretty nice day. Light's good. So let's walk through it. Now, the number one thing <laughs> absolutely in this exercise is make sure the gun's unloaded because we are going to be pulling the trigger just similar to dry firing. All right. All right. It's clear. So just for demonstration, set the magazine aside and I'm going to leave the slide locked back. All right, tools you're going to need for this job. You need some uh, paper, a pencil, at least six inches long is what you want. And I would make sure that it has an eraser on the end, acts kind of as a buffer against the firing pin. Masking tape or painter's tape would probably work. The manual says cellophane tape, plastic tape, I guess, uh, but I'm just gonna stick to masking tape because I've got some. The tape wrappings are gonna fit, form two bushings that fit the inside diameter of the weapon's barrel. The manual itself, the image, uh, two thirds the length of the pencil and then one half inch from the end of the eraser right here. The tricky part of this is to get it just right to where it fits in the barrel. Now, the first time I tried this, just uh, as a walkthrough, it really doesn't have to be that precise because your goal here is not to scratch up your barrel too much, cause any undue strain. I don't think the wood on the pencil would, but this the, the metal part that holds the eraser might. And so what I did is just wrap a little tape. Right, that's a little loose, so it needs a little more. that that feels pretty good it's it's a little bit loose but hopefully by the time we get the other the other one on there it 
should be pretty snug. I had a little pause this summer from videos. I broke my foot. Today would have been a perfect day to go out to the range, but I'm still in the boot, so I'm not going to push it too much right now. Hopefully I can get it back out to the range here soon enough. Do some more range videos. That's the ones people like to see. The, these target videos and these practice videos don't seem to be as popular in my analytics. People like to see guns shoot. So I'm still a little bit loose. I'm gonna add a little bit more just to just for good measure. Of course, the pencil does have to be sharp. You want a little bit of lead on the end just so it'll uh, make a mark on the paper. Now, the bullseye sheet can be copied, drawn, or stamped using the eraser of a pencil and an ink pad. I'm going to assume most people don't have an ink pad, so what I did is you can just take a marker and color the end of your pencil eraser and then just stamp it on there and it'll make a little bullseye for you. It does say that the bullseyes should be at least one inch apart. The fire should begin using a two hand grip, progressing to the one hand grip as his skills increase. The fire faces the target and takes up a good shooting position. This position is close enough to the miniature bullseye so that when the pencil is extended into the barrel, like so, the fire's arms extended and the sights aimed at the miniature bullseye, the pencil is within one inch of the target. That looks about one inch there. The bullseye sheet should be affixed to a target or any type of support, in my case a brick wall, and should be shoulder high to the fire. The fire inserts the pencil into the muzzle of the barrel, eraser first, cocks the hammer. He grips the weapon properly, extends a shooting arm, aims at the miniature bullseye, squeezes the trigger, and the hammer falls. The hammer strikes the firing pin, which in turn strikes the rubber eraser of the pencil, driving it out of the barrel and causing it to make a pencil dot a half inch below the target's bullseye, if the fire had the correct side alignment and trigger squeeze. So in my first shot there, I'm a little bit, that's almost a full inch, so... Let's try a few more shots here. The fire continues this exercise until he has fired a group of five pencil marks below each target. The object of this exercise is to keep the five pencil marks in a group as small as one eighth of an inch bullseye, half inch directly below the same bullseye. So there's five. We are inside of the bullseye. I don't have a tape measure handy. Um, that first one was a little out there, but the other ones look like a pretty good group. They're still a little bit low. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So my groups look pretty good. They're just pretty low. And if you're doing it on a hard surface, you might have to sharpen your pencil a couple of times. But as long as it makes the mark, that's the most important thing. So there's my five. Okay, so my eyeballing was a little bit off, so it looks like that that's just about a half an inch uh, below the target. So I wouldn't call that group exactly an eighth of an inch in diameter, but in this one, just with that flyer there, 
this flyer here, that one was a little bit off. I'm gonna center the bullseye down. It's just under a half an inch on that one. So I'm gonna do a couple of more. Dog's out here watching me. He doesn't seem terribly concerned. It wasn't intentional, but this eraser had a hole in the end of it and it actually helped when I stamped. It makes a little dot in the middle to help with the target. That one's way off. I'm shaking a lot on that one. Okay, so I think that the last two actually made the same hole there. So let me sharpen this pencil a little bit and then we'll go to the next one. All right, this top one, I'm gonna do it one-handed. I found this procedure to be very practical. This was a very interesting take on a dry fire exercise and adds a quote unquote new spin on an old practice. So maybe some of you will take this and run with it to improve your skills, or maybe some of you will find it a waste of time. Either way, thanks for watching, thanks for coming by, and I'll see you in the next one.